We're used to thinking that life can originate only on planets similar to our Earth, exoplanets close to the central star. However, what if we say that such exoplanets are probably not the only candidates for the emergence of life? Perhaps small icy satellites distant from the Sun could also be home to living organisms. Today we're going to tell you about Saturn's two satellites, Mimas and Enceladus, and how life could potentially thrive on seemingly lifeless satellites. First, let's take a closer look at Mimas. Mimas was discovered relatively recently, in 1789, by the English astronomer William Herschel. Mimas is one of the smallest satellites of Saturn, with a diameter of only 248 miles, about one-fourth or a quarter of our moon. Mimas consists largely of water ice, so the surface is very cold, the average temperature reaches about negative 328 degrees Fahrenheit. It's also very close to Saturn. The average distance between the satellite and the gas giant is 115,000 miles. This proximity is probably caused by the migration of Mimas. By the way, this event also explains one oddity of Saturn's rings. Have you ever noticed that Saturn's rings are separated by a line? This line is called the Cassini Division. Researchers from the Paris Observatory suggest that Mimas may have migrated closer to Saturn in the past, thereby clearing this line of ice and dust particles. Scientists estimate that Saturn would need another 40 million years to reclose the 4,500 kilometer line. Moreover, Mimas is in resonance with the other satellites, Enceladus, Thephi and Diona. That is, the closer they are to each other, the faster they move in their orbits and accordingly slow down when they move away from each other. This relationship stretches the orbit of Mimas to an almost elliptical shape, which supports the idea that life could exist on the satellite, but more about that a little later. However, of greater interest is the surface of the satellite. Mimas is almost entirely covered by huge craters. Most craters are about 20 to 40 kilometers in diameter in both hemispheres. But all of them pale before the main distinguishing feature of Saturn's satellite, the giant Herschel crater in the northern part of Mimas. And it gives a resemblance to the famous Death Star. The size of this crater is about 80 miles which of course may not seem very impressive when compared to Earth, but for small Mimas, it's almost one-third of its diameter. It was not William Herschel who discovered the crater, but the Voyager spacecraft in 1980. Nevertheless, this does not mean that the crater appeared recently. Its age is estimated at four billion years. Scientists suggest that the space body that crashed into Mimas and left the crater may have almost completely destroyed the moon. Moreover, in the middle of Herschel Crater, there's a mountain six kilometers or three and a half miles high, which is slightly smaller than Everest, which shows how strong the impact was. Nevertheless, such a large cosmic body could not have been limited to the external changes of the satellite. One of the most noticeable effects of the collision is probably the very strange surface temperature of Mimas. The temperature inside Mimas is expected to flow smoothly from the hot core to the cold surface, like on ordinary planets, but Cassini's temperature analysis has baffled scientists. It turned out a small part of the satellite on the left, which resembles the Pac-Man shape, is hot, while the rest of the surface is cold. Remarkably, Herschel's crater is also much warmer than the rest of the surface. The culprit is probably just this unknown body. Researchers speculated that the impact might have melted the ice on the surface. The thawed water could have frozen instantly, causing such a temperature difference. However, the top layer of Mimas remains intact. On the other hand, researcher Carly Hovett has pointed out that such strange temperatures may be caused by irradiation by charged particles that are captured by Saturn's magnetic field as confirmed by data from Cassini. So far, there's no concrete answer to this question. 
so perhaps further expeditions can bring us closer to unraveling this temperature Pac-Man. Now consider Saturn's other satellite, Enceladus. In terms of its characteristics, it doesn't seem to be very different from Mimas, it was also discovered by astronomer William Herschel. Enceladus is only about 100 kilometers larger in diameter than Mimas, and its average temperature and composition are not at all different, except that its density is higher than the latter. Just like Mimas, Enceladus has an elongated elliptical orbit due to the interaction with Diona, and it's also heated by attraction to Saturn. However, Enceladus has a very smooth and young surface, unlike Mimas. It also has craters up to 22 miles on its surface, but very few, more dominated by depressions and ridges that can be seen almost all over the moon's surface. The abundance of such landforms may indicate different tectonic activity, like an earthquake when tectonic plates compress. Moreover, another interesting similarity between Enceladus and Mimas is their influence on Saturn's rings. True, Enceladus did not harm them as probably Mimas did, but rather created them. In addition to the bright rings, which are very close to the gas giant, there's another ring, Ring E, which is less clear and is 112,000 miles from the center of Saturn, occupying approximately 186,400 miles wide. So how could such a small planet create such a huge ring? This is where some serious differences between Enceladus and Mimas begin. First, let's look at the surface of the moon. Unlike the seemingly lifeless Mimas, Enceladus emphasizes that it's an icy satellite. It's almost entirely covered with pure fresh ice dusted with something like snow. By the way, it's this feature of Enceladus that allows it to reflect almost all the light that falls on it, which only makes its surface colder. But still, how could snow appear on the satellite? Does it have an Earth-like atmosphere? In fact, snow on Enceladus forms inside. The surface of Enceladus, also like Mimas, has one feature, but this time it's not a giant crater, but long parallel cracks at the South Pole, which are dubbed tiger stripes. Flying near Saturn in 2005, Cassini detected strange activity in these tiger streaks. Pillars of water vapor were flying out of them. Moreover, Cassini also noticed that the moon wiggled as it rotated. For scientists, this meant only one thing. There is also an ocean lurking under the ice column of Enceladus. It is these ice particles that fly out of the ocean depths at a speed of 800 miles per hour. And they cover all of Enceladus and also form a huge ring for Saturn. By the way, probably because of the water ejections inside, Enceladus has such a smooth surface. Enceladus also has volcanoes, but they spew water rather than lava, smoothing the satellite's landscape. However, Enceladus is very small. Shouldn't it be depleted at this rate of emissions? Well, astronomer Phil Plate thinks it'll take about 9 billion years, which is twice the current age of the solar system so it won't disappear for a long time. So where did these amazing stripes come from? According to a study by Douglas Hemingway, the ice at the pole is thinner, so the cracks appeared there due to the gravitational interaction of Saturn and frozen water, which increased the pressure on the ice wall. In addition, thanks to these tiger stripes, Enceladus can keep its ocean in a liquid state, which is necessary for the origin of life. Moreover, the moon has an atmosphere that's largely composed of water vapor and also small amounts of nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and methane. Interestingly, the moon also probably has a metallic core, and due to its oddly porous shape, it can heat the satellite's ocean, making it even more suitable for organisms. Thus, Enceladus may be hiding an entire life under a layer of ice. Nevertheless, if Enceladus and Mimas in general are similar, 
then why is the ice on Mimas not melting at all? Although Enceladus has clear traces of an internal ocean. In addition, thanks to its more elongated orbit, Mimas should heat up much more than the same Enceladus, but it remains completely frozen. This temperature weirdness has led NASA scientists to even come up with cases to test theories that explain the frozen water on the satellite that should also justify partial water and geysers on Enceladus. Researchers from the University of Warsaw, they believe that such a paradox could hypothetically be caused simply by different periods of heating of the two satellites by Saturn's gravitational pull. Thus, Enceladus is much denser than Mimas, so it could be heated much longer, while Mimas, due to its small size, could cool down very quickly. Moreover, in order not to lose much heat, the satellite needs to enter into resonance with another body as soon as possible. However, Mimas merged with Tafaya too late when it had already cooled down. So Mimas can be considered a frozen block of ice that is unlikely to melt? So no life is possible on it? Not exactly. Indeed, for a long time, scientists considered Mimas to be a lifeless moon, but a recent observation has forced the scientific world to reconsider its attitude. In 2014, Cornell University researcher Radwan Tajedin discovered that Mimas wobbles back and forth as it rotates. And this unusual behavior of the planets is explained by a weirdly shaped nucleus or by some kind of internal activity. But what could be inside this small satellite? Scientists think that under the dozens of kilometers of ice crust of Mimas, there may be an ocean just like on Enceladus. Scientists at Southwestern Research University last year found that Mimas is capable of generating enough heat to keep the ocean inside itself. Apparently, however, it's not enough to melt a thick layer of ice. Nevertheless, according to observations, the ice shell of Mimas began to thin after the appearance of a huge crater. Therefore, it's possible that Saturn's satellite may only be an incipient oceanic world. Moreover, Rodwan Tajedin suggests that the elongated elliptical orbit of Mimas, which allows for better heating of the satellite, may also support the ocean. Thus, Mimas and Enceladus reveal to scientists the possibility of similar ice space bodies with hidden oceans, and most importantly, the possibility of life development even on seemingly empty and inactive planets. The ocean is practically the basis for the origin of life. So could Mimas and Enceladus be potentially inhabited? Let's try to figure that out. However, for starters, could ice planets become habitable because it's too cold for vital processes? Astronomer Adiv Paradise thinks that Earth may have been a cold water planet at its stage of development, which is exactly what probably started life as we know it. However, such planets also probably need certain warm areas to support life and carbon dioxide. Therefore, ice planets should probably not be ruled out as theoretically habitable. In addition, there's more than one cold planet in our solar system on which life is possible and Mimas and Enceladus may also belong to them. You already know that Enceladus definitely has an ocean. However, it's important to note that its geysers and particles within the E-ring of Saturn hint that the ocean is warm and probably has hydrothermal vents deep. That is, it could be considered ideal for the development of microbial life. Moreover, Cassini found that these geysers contain the chemical elements necessary for life, oxygen, hydrogen, and various carbon compounds, including methane, which is the result of microbial life. A team of scientists from the University of Arizona and the University of Paris, after studying the gas emissions, believe that microbes could probably exist in the ocean of Enceladus, just like on Earth which, moreover, does not need sunlight. Saturn, by the way, can send various compounds into the ocean of Enceladus, and probably including Mimas. Also, as we noted, Enceladus has an atmosphere with important chemical elements. Although we won't be able to breathe on Enceladus, 
this moon could still probably be home to single-celled life. But what about Mimas? Unfortunately, this moon has not been of much interest to scientists, so much about it remains unknown. Nevertheless, the liquid ocean is a very significant factor in the origin of life. Therefore, it is possible that the ocean of Mimas may also contain the same different elements for the development of organisms that exist on Enceladus. Moreover, the ice thickness on Mimas is completely similar to that on Enceladus, meaning that internal activity could melt it. However, unlike Enceladus, Mimas, as you know, has a strange temperature distribution, and probably because of this, we don't see water geysers and therefore don't know what compounds the likely ocean holds. However, this does not necessarily mean that life on Mimas is impossible. Scientist Alyssa Roden suggests that the lack of tiger bands can be explained by the fact that the possible ocean formed relatively recently on a cosmic scale. In addition, she noted that its elongated orbit allowed Mimas to be well heated, so it probably has a warm liquid ocean, meaning it's probably heated not only by attraction to Saturn, but also by internal sources like Enceladus. Nevertheless, Mimas has no atmosphere at all, which may reduce the chances of life, but not eliminate it. Mimas and Enceladus were a real boon for planetary science, They've opened the scientific community to icy planets as likely candidates for life. They've also added more work for scientists by showing that life may not only be worth looking for on planets like our Earth.